Hi, my name is Darby from ClearPath Robotics by Rockwell Automation. Today we'll be uncrediting the new Husky A300, our medium-sized outdoor mobile robot for research and development. In this video, we'll be uncrediting the robot, showing what's included, turning it on, and driving out of the crate. Whether you're doing research and development or a commercial deployment, this is where it all begins. So let's get started. Before we get started, safety first. Please review the safety documentation in the user manual linked in the description below. To open the crate, you'll need an impact gun with a 14 millimeter hex socket to remove the 10 bolts on the front edge of the crate. For this video, we'll also be removing the 10 bolts on the back edge of the crate for easier access to the robot. You can also use a standard socket wrench to do this, but it'll take more time. It'll also be helpful to have a crowbar or a flathead screwdriver to help dislodge the doors. It is important to only remove these bolts, especially if you have a custom integration on your robot, to prevent any of the walls from falling on the robot. Let's uncrate the robot together. We recommend wearing proper PPE of camera protection, glasses, and steel toe shoes. the front of the crate open, you'll see our robot. In this case, we have a Husky A300 base unit with the AMP configuration. You might just have the base unit or a different custom integration. We also have the accessory box here, which we will open up. So in the accessory box, we have the PlayStation DualShock Bluetooth wireless controller. We have the battery charger with the country-specific cabling. We have some spare parts and cable ties. We have the Let's Get Rolling postcard, which has links to step-by-step -step guides, software downloads, and support resources. And as a fun bonus, we also have the Husky A300 Lego kit, which will be a fun addition to your workstation. If you ordered a networking base station or an e-stop remote, that along with its chargers will also be included in the crate. Before unstrapping the robot, we're also going to be removing the back door to make it a bit easier. Great, now that we have full access to the robot, we're going to take the retro straps off the wheels. To remove the robot from the crate, you can either pull it out down the ramp or use the PlayStation controller to drive it out. In order to do that, we're going to start at the rear access panel. Here at the back of the robot, we have the access panel, the power button, the ink display for battery and status updates, one of the e-stop buttons, and the e-stop reset button. In the access panel, you'll see the breaker switch, the wireless e-stop bypass key switch, connectivity ports, and the charge port. Before powering on the robot, turn the wireless e-stop bypass key to the horizontal position to disable the wireless e-stop. If you don't have a wireless e-stop, leave it in this position so the robot doesn't search for one. If you do have a wireless e-stop, keep the key in the horizontal position until the robot is out of the crate and your e-stop is charged and turn on. Then switch the key back to the vertical enabled position. The e-stop is also automatically engaged when the rear access panel is open. To start the robot, you need to switch the battery breaker on. We recommend referring to our lockout tagout procedure in the user manual before doing work on the robot. Now that the access panel is closed, you can press the black and white power button on the, to turn on the robot. It takes around 30 seconds for the robot to boot up. The four status lights on each corner of the robot will flash red, indicating that the e-stop is engaged. To disengage the e-stop, ensure that all push dial button e-stops are released by twisting them. The rear access panel is completely latched in the closed position and the wireless e-stop is either disengaged or has the key switch in the bypass position. Then the lights should be solid white in the front and solid red on the back. Now that the robot is turned on and the e-stops are disengaged, we can now connect the pre-configured Bluetooth PlayStation controller to the robot. In order to do that, you need to press the PS button in the middle until it shows solid blue. Now we're ready to drive. 
In order to drive the robot, you need to press either L1 for slow mode or R1 for fast mode, and you can also lightly use the joystick. These buttons also work as a dead man switch, so as soon as you let go of them, the robot will stop driving. Congratulations, you've uncrated your new Husky A300. When you're ready to charge it, just plug the charger into the charging port in the access panel and then the other end into an electrical socket. While it's charging, you'll see the robot lights pulse from green to yellow and then be solid green when it's fully charged. To wrap up, if you have any issues, be sure to check out the user manual and documentation linked below or contact our support team. We encourage customers to keep their crate for any future shipments. Be sure to check out our next video, which will be leading you through how to set up and configure your robot for your project. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.